welcome to Gotta Be Handmade. My name is Linda. I'm the YouTube personality behind the Gotta Be Handmade channel. I bring attention to handmade artists by increasing their exposure through my social media platforms. And today I have Mr. Warren joining me. Hello, Mr. Warren. Thank hey, you. Hey, Linda, thank you for the patience on the technical difficulties. Glad to be here. It's okay. I've been visiting your Etsy shop early this morning, and I just love your products. You create such beautiful writing instruments. Now tell everybody what you create. Well, I make mostly pens. I use a, a wood lathe to make them on. I make, uh, I make a few other things other than pens, but pens is my concentration. Um, make them out of mostly woods, but I do also acrylic pens and uh, out of abalone, snake skins, all kinds of other mixed media. So, uh, Oh, I didn't know about the snake skins. I tell yeah. you what, my I'll, I'll, favorite I'll, are the ones that you, oh my goodness. That's, that's, a, that's a real snake skin. That's a real rattlesnake skin. Oh my goodness. Pretty oh, wild, isn't it? Warren, I love it. You Thank know, you. I, my favorite is the mixture of the woods and the resin. All oh, this beautiful. Thank you. That's one of my favorites as well. I love those. Uh, any of those. There's some that have blue resin, some that are red. They're they're really, really beautiful. Now, the snake skin, how long did it take you to make it? Most of these pens, the, the, the curing of the resin when you pour those is the longest process. That takes a little over 24 hours. Um, the actual, the making, the turning it on the lathe is typically an hour or so, um, but it's usually stretched out over a few days just to make sure the process gets done correctly and there are any problems with it. So it can be a multiple day process, but actual time, usually an hour or two. Oh my goodness. They are absolutely exquisite. Now, do you also create uh, fountain pens? I'm having a little bit of a hard time hearing you. Could you ask that again? Do you also create fountain pens? I do create fountain pens. I don't have as much of a command for those, but I personally write with a fountain pen at my desk. Um, and I, I really enjoy fountain pens. It's, there's something real warm about the writing with a, a smooth flowing ink like that. Uh, roller balls and ball points are a little more popular, but there's a real cult following of fountain pens. But uh, there's a little more maintenance, learning how to use them properly uh, that goes along with it. But if a buyer is willing to educate themselves, it's a better writing experience and something that I really like. Now, for a, we... for a, a new writer, I don't always recommend a fountain pen necessarily. Okay. Now, if we purchase a fountain pen, will you teach us to use it? I do. If it's one-on-one, -on -one, I can show people how to change the inks, how to smooth the nibs and do some basic things. There's uh, some fantastic resources on YouTube. There's a company called Goulet Pens that sells inks and resources, and uh, they have some awesome YouTube videos. So if anybody's interested in fountain pens, look at uh, GouletPens.com. And their, uh, and their YouTube instructional videos as well, because that's where I got my personal education on, uh, on how to do them as well as I can. So I, I really like their resources, great. They are great. I had to use them as well. Uh, someone gifted me with a beautiful fountain pen. I couldn't get the thing to write. And I had to go <laughs> to YouTube and I found that company and I even uh, called them. They are great. But now your... Um, pins when we purchase your pins like the one with the snake skin or if we purchase mm -hmm. the exotic woods how do we care for them is it anything that we need to do the biggest thing that i recommend obviously not having uh using clean hands the oils of your hands a lot of the finishes that i use on the woods especially mm -hmm. are natural so they can absorb oil still so if you have really um uh, you know, a lot of uh, just clean hands in general. The biggest thing, though, is keeping them out of extreme elements. So not wet environments. Uh, don't leave them in your vehicle. Uh, don't leave them in a place where they can get really, really hot or really, really cold. The wood can still expand and contract and actually form cracks. 
Um, it can be repaired, but it's a, it's a bit of a process and, and not something that we try to warranty uh, if, it's, if it's a neglect thing. Um, I try to send instructions with my pens as well. Um, then there's things like not dropping them and, and stuff like that that kind of come into play. But they're, they're really low maintenance overall as long as they're not introduced to extreme uh, environments. Um, you know, not dunking them in water, things of that, things of that nature. Yes. Oh, wonderful. So you do include some instructions with them. I do. Yes. I've, I've actually just finished some up uh, just to make it for a little better uh, buying experience for somebody that, that I don't want to assume that somebody may or may not know something. So, uh, so I do include that with purchases now. Okay. We have, a and I also have inks. Most of the inks that I use are replaceable at most uh, office supply stores. But if there's ever anybody that buys one from me that needs an ink, I'll usually pass those along at a at a very low cost, um, just to just to make sure they can keep writing with their pens they enjoy so much. Oh, okay. So, Mr. Warren, we can get the ink from you as well. That's correct. Okay. Now, a person wants to know what type of snake did the skin come from? That one that I showed uh, is a diamondback rattlesnake. I think I think that is a Western Diamondback, if I remember correctly. Where did you get the skin? That one actually came from a guy in Texas. So they they get them at um, rattlesnake roundups, and, and I know not to offend anyone. I know there may be some animal lovers that even love rattlesnakes out there. Um, I'm personally not a fan of rattlesnakes, so it doesn't bother me. But um, they they don't kill them just for their skins. They'll they'll, they'll get them at rattlesnake roundups, and then the skin is almost a, a byproduct that still gets used. So at least it's being used for something uh, versus right. being tossed in a trash can. That's right, and it's okay. I actually went to a Hobby Lobby once that had a setup in the front of the store with all types of hides and skins. It was oh, the really? first time that I had ever seen anything like that. They had That's a pretty whole cool display right in the front of the store so it's okay that's not too pc but that's all right with me that's that's okay <laughs> now mr warren where can we get your beautiful pins well my etsy store is called southern pen works um and then also uh, I'm, my email address is southern pinworks at gmail.com i don't have a website yet i, I mentioned i think the two that's very much a hobby for me um, and I, I used to make pottery and I ruined that by doing shows and, and, and taking uh, on way too much business. So I've been real careful with this to, to make what I want to make. But I do take custom orders if somebody has something special. Um, I recently made a, a guy an order of 10 pins that uh, the wood came from their family farm in New York. And uh, so I was able to take that wood that meant a lot to that family and turn it into some beautiful writing instruments that they can use um all across the country so that was that was cool so that's going to be their christmas gifts this year is yeah. uh, is taking that family farm wood and and, and turning into pens for family so stuff like that um I, I love those kind of orders where it's a uh, something i can do something that has some meaning behind it so oh how wonderful i didn't know that you did that that is Absolutely. great even an old chair that's been broken you know somebody's grandfather's chair that yeah. Uh, is broken, but they still want to save the piece of furniture. Can be made into pens. There's there's a lot of stuff you can do. It's such a small piece of wood and material that that gets to be used. Um, you can do a lot with with that sort of thing. So that's kind of neat. Yes. Now everybody, when the video has completed, I'll make certain to put Mr. Warren's Etsy shop link right at the bottom, so you'll be able to click on it and go right to the shop. Now Warren. What is the uh, average price of your pins? They start at around 40 to $50. The average price is probably about $75 to $85. Um, right now, they go up to $200 plus. Uh, there's some really rare materials that are available out there that get really, really expensive. Um, there's some historical woods, like things from a, a tree that George Washington uh, planted that would be uh, – probably in the six to $700 range, things like that, that are, that are available out there for history buffs. Um, so there's, there's a lot of different stuff out there, but average about 75 to $85. So, but they, they do start, like I said, in the 40 to $50 range for something pretty simple. Um, but they're still, you know, a 40 or $50 pen is still a really, really nice pen. I, I personally write with one that's about a $50 pen, um, but I, it's one that I really like. So it's what I keep in my pocket. And then on my desk stays my fountain pen. That's about a hundred dollar fountain pen. 
Mr. Warren, you'll be hearing from me. You are absolutely fascinating. I had no idea we could do that. I have a piece of wood that I got from Motown, and I would love to do something with it. Uh, I would love to do something with it. So I kinda, let me know, for real. I would uh, love to. I kind of picked that up um, on a tour, and I <laughs> I don't think it's illegal for me to have it, but <laughs> I would love to create a pin from it. I won't tell anybody. There you go. Now, Warren, tell us once again, what's the name of your Etsy shop and where we can get it your is Southern Pin Works. I think it's Etsy.com forward slash Etsy, or in Southern Pin Works, I'm sorry. Uh, and I, I'm in Georgia, which is the southern part. I, I'm born and raised in Georgia. And, uh, and Pinworks is just one of the names that I've seen for a, a pin shop that I, I really like. So um, I don't know if you'll be able to see in the video. I can kind of show you over my shoulder some other things. There's a pepper mill back there and a ice cream scoop, a pizza cutter, a duck call. So I can do some other things, but, but pins is, is what I have in my shop for sale right now. So but get with me on that Motown wood. That would be a, that would be a fun project. I would love to do something with that. Okay, I will. And thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. Listen, thank you for liking my shop and for promoting artists. Uh, for the guys that are watching out there, the guys and the girls that are watching out there, support your local artist, uh, yeah. whether it's local geographically or local in your interest. Um, it means a lot to us. So people that get to do things with their hand, like yourself, Linda, you do some stuff with your hands as well. Uh, it, it's it's cool to have a, a passion of your supported and uh, and thank you. I'm really impressed with your technology skills. You've got better technology skills than I do. So I'm uh, I'm really impressed. So thank you, ma'am. I appreciate your time. No problem. The old bird plans to spend the rest of her life promoting handmade artists and the beautiful work that they create. I really appreciate you and you will be hearing from me. That and everybody, great. thank you for joining us today. Thank you because for having me, ma'am. For the best, it's just gotta be handmade. Amen. Thanks, Warren. Thank you, ma'am. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.